Hi, I'll continue with paragraph 9 of the chapter on ornaments in general in Box Versuch über die wahre Art das Klavier zu spielen. Indessen muss man dennoch vor allen Dingen sich hüten, dass man auch mit unserer Art von Manieren nicht zu verschwenderisch umgehe. Man betrachte sie als Zierraten, womit man das beste Gebäude überhäufen und als das Gewürze, womit man die besten Speisen verderben kann. Viele Noten, indem sie von keiner Erheblichkeit sind, müssen von ihnen verschont bleiben. Viele Noten, welche an sich schimmernd genug sind, leiden sie ebenfalls nicht, weil sie nur die Wichtigkeit und Einfalt solcher Noten erheben und von anderen unterscheiden sollen. Widrigenfalls würde ich denselben Fehler begehen, in den ein Redner fällt, welcher auf jedes Wort einen nachdrücklichen Akzent legen wollte. Alles würde einerlei und folglich undeutlich werden. Wir werden aus der Folge ersehen, dass mancher Fall mehr als eine Art von Manieren erlaubt. Hier brauche man den Vorteil der Veränderung. Man bringe bald eine schmeichelnde, bald eine schimmernde Manier an, oder man trage zur Abwechslung manchmal die Noten, insofern sie es erlauben, ganz schlecht, ohne Manier, doch nach den Regeln des guten Vortrags, wovon in dem folgenden Hauptstücke gehandelt werden wird, und nach dem wahren Effekt vor. Es ist schwer, den Sitz jeder Manier so gar genau zu bestimmen, indem jeder Komponist bei seinen Erfindungen, ohne dass er dem guten Geschmacke Gewalt tut, die Freiheit hat, an den meisten Orten eine ihm beliebige Manier dabei zu setzen. Wir begnügen uns durch einige fest bestimmte Sätze und Exempel, wenigstens durch Anführung der Unmöglichkeit einer anzubringenden Manier, unsere Leser hierinnen zu unterrichten. Und indem man bei denen Stücken, wo alle Manieren angedeutet sind, deswegen unbekümmert sein kann, so pflegen im Gegenteil die Stücke, wo wenig oder nichts dabei gezeichnet ist, nach der gewöhnlichen Art mit ihren Manieren versehen zu werden. Indem ich mich in dieser schweren Sache noch zur Zeit keines Vorgängers, welcher mir diese schlüpfrige Bahn gebrochen hätte, zu erinnern weiß, so wird mir niemand verübeln können, wenn ich glaube, dass, ungeacht gewisser festgesetzten Fälle, dennoch vielleicht eine Möglichkeit zur Ausnahme vorhanden sein kann. Deswegen ist nötig, weil bei dieser Materie, um sie mit Vernunft zu gebrauchen, viele Kleinigkeiten akt zu nehmen sind, dass man, so viel, viel als möglich, durch fleißige Anhörung guter Musiken sein Gehör übe und vor allen Dingen, um vieles desto besser zu verstehen, die Wissenschaft des Generalbasses besitze. Wir haben aus der Erfahrung, dass derjenige, welcher nichts Grundliches von der Harmonie versteht, allezeit bei Anbringung der Manieren im Finstern tappet und den guten Ablauf niemals seiner Einsicht, sondern dem bloßen Glücke zuzuschreiben hat. Ich werde zu dem Ende alle Zeit, wo es nötig ist, den Bass den Exempel beifügen. So, I think there's, um, these paragraphs are for the most part um, self-explanatory so I don't have much to say about them just say about um, paragraph 9 that I mean when you when you think of a piece that's been ornamented by Beethoven or Mozart or Bach they have added no more and no less than one needs you know to um, create the, the meal or decorate the building to use those analogies that Bach used and you're gonna get the opportunity 
in in what Bach provides to be able to do that yourself independently of Mozart or Beethoven or any other you know performer or pianist out there you won't need to copy you won't need to listen to them to hear how it's done you'll know yourself on your own independently and so that's um, something that can be kind of considered when when um, just when considering what Bach is saying in that paragraph 9 in paragraph 10 you could wonder what the rules of um, good performance are and Bach says he's gonna you know get kind of they'll be dealt with in in an upcoming chapter or section and one could wonder what the you know true effect is he's talking about and you could ask your um somebody an expert what are the rules of good performance and if you're not entirely satisfied with the answer you might want to you know stick around and find out and um, just a mention of I, I suppose I should mention that when he says you know that um, for the sake of variety you can also perform the notes gan schlecht and if when one translates schlecht in German it means badly and I saw just in the last week when I was looking over these paragraphs I noticed in the in you know in the kind of in what Baron writer they they mentioned that word and yeah and and they said how it comes from rather it, it's it's meaning schlicht not not badly but like plainly or unadorned and so yeah so that would you know I've seen on the internet translations where they translate it or a translation where it's translated you know as an alternative you can play the you could play the notes completely black badly <laughs> so it's not to be boring <laughs> for the sake of variation so you know if you were to really you know believe that translation you could think you know to be to be diverse Bach played notes terribly <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and in paragraph 11 so Bach says you know how hard it is to determine the the place or the nature or the the seat of of a of an ornament so precisely or definitely you know and 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 he talks about the the freedom that the composer has when he doesn't do damage to good taste and you can see there is a like in the last video what i was talking about about describing the you know that they're not putting in dynamics or expression marks because they decide i want this piece i want this bit to be played loud or i want a crescendo here that uh, a, a a great composer does not add a crescendo because they want it there and decided yes i like that here here i want people to put one there you know that the freedom of the composer is 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 limited as long as the composer good taste you could um replace the word good taste with nature and as long as he doesn't commit crimes against nature he's free to do whatever he likes but if he does commit crimes against nature it means the ornament he's adding is wrong that even though it's his music he's 
the author, he's wrong when he adds ornaments. He's not free to add any ornament he likes. But, you know, the different, the different ornaments that don't do damage, do harm to, to good taste or, 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 or commit crimes against nature. Each of those ornaments he chooses is one like a slightly different location in the world of music. And he's free to pick any location he prefers that actually exists in the world of music. And, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, and when, when the damage is done to good taste, they're creating a location that doesn't exist in the world of music. And they're creating a location that's actually, you know, in the cage that can be done when you're painting your notes loud because you don't find notes painted loud on your explorations. You're painting, your, you're painting yourself the notes loud, which um, it's anyway just a cage. So you, you can commit as many crimes against nature as you want in the cage. It doesn't matter because none of it is music. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> go on about that again yeah and I think um, Bach even though he says that here how difficult it is to do that I think he's done it remarkably well and you might then find out for yourself as we go through the ornaments and you get to the end and you realize with what you know, with, with what kind of independence you are able to make your own decisions, you will realize how well he has done that. And, 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 and when you read back or when you listen back to these words, after seeing it, you'll see what standards Bach had that he'd, he'd say such a thing, even though he's done it so, so exemplary. Yeah, and you could think it did, did that last bit that was as well. It, it, I had trouble translating it or accepting what what seemed to be the translation of it for my because I was you know thinking of the word unbekumert and 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 thinking how that reflects to emotion and then he he says he doesn't kind of say like you know for me. That sentence would make sense if he said, um, well, and when you get encounter pieces where all the ornaments are indicated, you can, you can, you, you can be unconcerned. Whereas when you encounter pieces that, um, where little or nothing is indicated and that have to be, you know, um, adorned with ornaments in the conventional way, that can be a real headache. You know, to me that would, I felt that, that it needed that reference to unbecomer to balance as a sentence. But I think that can be um, kind of satisfied or assuaged, if that's the word. <laughs> When you think of unbecumered, not in the sense of the emotional, but in the sense of, of your, your duties. And then as it's balanced by what your duties are, when there is little or nothing indicated in the piece, you still have to, you know, if you're given the ingredients to come back to the, to the, meal analogy if you're given the ingredients well then it's up to you to add the seasoning to give it the taste and to satisfy all the rules of good performance which you know Bach will we'll, we'll get to at the after we've gone through the ornaments
and as well when he talks about the possibility of that there's exceptions you know I think that's an indication of the standards Bach has that he says that even though he's probably he'll probably put you in a position of of authority and independence that um you know you don't hear in the public even in in great artists you don't hear you're not going to hear existent in existence that level of independence that you might um find yourself having because you know there's a difference when um when when the right answer is found everybody is going to play it dissimilarly because it's the right way to play it and there you can think that indicates that all those people who play it like that haven't a clue or, or they know the correct answer when they play it a certain way and and the, the more correct the people become the more similar their interpretations are going to be the decisions they make are going to be because they're they're making they're not making their own personal decision they're making the correct decision but when you can say, when, when when something is done incorrectly yet everybody is doing it the same incorrectly you can see that they that they are lacking independence they are listening to others they are copying others and and they all do it they all have the same mistakes in common because they are not independent and it's not to say that when you're independent you'll come up with the right answer but you are not going to have the same answer as if your answer is correct and, and another person's answer is incorrect you're not going to have the same answer as that other person your answer might be in, incorrect theirs might be correct and it won't be the same that is it's not necessarily you're going to be correct but you are going to have the um the means to have artistic independence when applying ornaments and then just finally in this in the last paragraph in paragraph 13 so Bach says I can imagine um, experts are grown-up sensible people nodding their head when they hear Bach say if you don't understand the fundamentals of harmony you know you'll be groping around in the dark but I would say if you want to think about the words and consider something how how does a fundamental understanding of harmony help you when um, introducing ornaments and I would ask especially those people who are nodding their heads to what Bach says how and how many times does harmony come up in the lesson when let's say with Mozart when playing the ornaments Mozart has indicated where he wants an ornament how often have you heard your teacher or if you're a teacher how often have you talked about the harmony in terms of what ornament it's meant to be how it's meant to be played what the purpose of that ornament is in that moment and if you go back to the first video uh, on ornaments in general you could, again this like I said at the time that'll be it's like you can you can have that as your your blueprint and all those functions of ornamentation that Bach listed with his insight he decided what would be on that list in what order which of them is that ornament in that moment 
satisfying. So, I would say when Bach says understanding, um, you know, f f f so the, what's fundamental of the harmony, what is that understanding? Do you understand harmony in a way that plays a role in your choice or performance or you know just this in figuring out the nature of the ornament in in a in a mozart sonata so that would be something to think about and maybe you might think oops um maybe i don't know that maybe i should stick around and find out because um you know if your students follow this channel it'll come to the point where they know How many times, how often do you share your insight with your students when it comes to um, performing or executing or deciding on the ornaments in a Mozart piece? that would be something to ask yourself and to think about. And, and if you're a student or a performer or a student, ask yourself, how often does your insight play a role in, in, in deciding on and performing the ornaments in a Mozart sonata? Or are you just looking up what notes to play, how many, and just putting them in there and, and, and not thinking about harmony or, or any of the factors without having any insight that you're going to use in order to reach your decision. And how often do the ornaments just, you know, how often is it a question of how fast you play them, how evenly, how, how you fit them in. How many people use the metronome to practice ornaments and are hoping the metronome sorts out, replaces the insight that those who understand nothing fundamental of harmony and understanding something fundamental of harmony means knowing how, what role it plays, how you're, you know, how, how, how it plays a role, when it plays a role. That's what Bach is talking about. He's not talking about knowing that the chord of five goes to the chord of one. That Mozart goes two, four and five and, and or or thinking or saying that you know you're going to feel a natural pull when you're on on the chord of five to the chord of one what's that got to do with anything in what way does that play any role and if you say something like that that you're you're drawn towards the chord of one after the chord of five i would if you told me that in a lesson, I would ask you, does it?
and you'd have to actually stick your neck out and stand up for that what you it is you say and you're going to have to expose yourself because I'll be waiting for your answer and when I say why or how you're going to have to be able to answer that and you could do that in your lesson to stand up for yourself I'm not saying don't burn bridges because you, you'll only get hassled for yourself because you know a lot of these people they talk about how great education is and they want their students to think for themselves and all that but as soon as you show any signs of independent thinking critical thinking of doubt you're very quickly in their bad books and they despise you they'll make your life hard they'll punish you wherever they can you know they they'd they they give you a worse mark even though you don't deserve it just to get back at you because you asked them why and how and they didn't have an answer and they don't appreciate that from you so i'd say to def defend yourself yeah if they say if they feel you know you're naturally drawn towards the chord of one after the chord of five or towards the tonic tonic when you're on the dominant you could ask them how and why to de you know to stick up for yourself to say i am worth more i am i deserve for my money i deserve some answers so tell me how and why that is but if there's you know if it's all about you know playing the game and popularity i advise you not to do it to smile and nod as if you're hearing something worthwhile or valuable and keep that to yourself because yeah it could could make your life your college life or any of that difficult because um you know you're getting too big when you ask why or how and there is no room in Lilliput for giants there's just no room and you'll be quickly either you know tied down or kicked out but as a giant you cannot move freely in Lilliput without destroying the entire place there's no room for giants in Lilliput hmm. yeah so that's this is a sh shorter one even though I I mean I don't <laughs> this is a shorter video um, but I'd say that's what can be some of the things that can be taught about in those paragraphs and they are they're kind of a taste of things to come. Bach is telling you why you're paying attention, what you're doing it for, what's what what what's in it for you at the end of it. And so I would say, like whatever I say, whatever way, if it rubs you the wrong way or anything, ignore that. Ignore it. It's just they're just words that I say because I'm presenting it so so ignore them be selfish think what do I want for myself take that for yourself what helps you and ignore the rest it's it's worth it it's worth it it's it's the clever thing to do it's the clever thing to do and it makes you a clever person when you take when you're selfish and you take what's good for you take it from this and ignore the rest hmm. yeah so i will continue with the with more paragraphs there's already in the next paragraphs there's some um stuff that you know even even in this 
introduction chapter to ornamentation before he even gets into specifics we are going to find in the next paragraph uh, something he says that exposes maybe maybe the entire classical music sector or everybody who represents classical music every expert it's going to expose them all that they haven't even considered the introduction to ornaments in box book and and they 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 take it they they play what's wrong as being what's right that's why i say myself that um i'll play beethoven and mozart all these people i'll play them my way and I let everybody else play them their way. But I don't want, I'm not interested in authenticity. I much prefer playing them my way than their way, which is meant to be the authentic way. But I don't want my way to be authentic. I don't want it because it means everybody can copy me and hide behind it you know the fact that it's authentic and i don't want that i much rather be inauthentic and 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 be doing it my way and if 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 you play it the same you're copying me you have no excuse you can't copy me and then say oh i'm not copying this is authentic no, I'm not playing it authentically. When, when whatever way you hear me perform the ornaments in Mozart or Beethoven or Bach or, or any of the choices in, in, in interpretation that I make, none of them are authentic. But those of you who are following this book you'll be able to make up your own mind about what's authentic or inauthentic or unauthentic or not authentic. <laughs> you know? And you'll see how the people who play Mozart and Beethoven, their, you know, Mozart and Beethoven's way, you can see how they stand up when you get to know when you discover what Bach has to say and you might enjoy that and it will definitely give you an edge, put you ahead of the field. So yeah, I might stick around to hear it. it's free and You've nothing to lose, except maybe the false beliefs. You might you might lose them <laughs> in the process. That's just a a, a warning. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.